In 1775, Paul Revere rode his horse to Lexington to warn the Minutemen that the British were coming. Paul Revere was a great example of an ordinary man who became politically involved and who becomes symbolic of the American Revolution as someone who risked everything to make history and to change the world. Paul Revere was born on New Year's Day, 1735, in Boston, Massachusetts. Paul Revere was an artisan, and that's a very important class in the 18th century. By 1760, Paul Revere was a master silversmith and sold his wares throughout Boston because he was a guy who knew everybody in Boston. Revere married Sarah Orne in 1757, and after her death, Rachel Walker in 1773. In total, he had 16 children. British soldiers invaded Boston in 1768. One of Paul Revere's first known political acts was to do an engraving showing the Boston Massacre and what became one of the most famous images of the American Revolution. And because of this etching, there was massive support for the Patriot cause. It was a propaganda piece. Paul Revere was also one of the leaders of the Boston Tea Party. On December 16, 1773, a number of colonists disguised themselves, mounted the ships, and dumped the tea into Boston Harbor, an event that we now call the Boston Tea Party. Paul Revere was one of only two Patriot leaders who was publicly identified as having been involved in the Boston Tea Party. Paul Revere was a courier for the Patriots, and as such, he was told to ride to Lexington to warn John Hancock and Samuel Adams that the British were coming. So late on the evening of April 18th, 1775, he rode from Boston to Lexington to warn these men. A big part of the reason why we remember Paul Revere's ride to this day is Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's famous poem, The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. One if by land and two if by sea, and I on the opposite shore will be, ready to ride and spread the alarm through every Middlesex village and farm for the country folk to be up and to arm. During the Revolutionary War, Revere served as a Lieutenant Colonel of Artillery in the Massachusetts Militia. Paul Revere also manufactured gunpowder and cannons for the Revolutionary War, and he actually was the first one to produce paper money for the United States. Following the war, Revere expanded his business interests and opened the country's first successful copper rolling mill, which provided the U.S. Navy a domestic source to copper bottom its ships. Revere died a wealthy man in Boston on May 10, 1818, at the age of 83. Paul Revere represents this kind of David versus Goliath kind of quality that we like to think of ourselves as being part of our national history. You've got this British force that's sent out, and it's the one guy on his horse riding at midnight who manages to defeat them. I think we really like that. Mark Twain is now thought of as America's first celebrity because he was so good at capturing the public imagination, and it became important to him to have a public image.